Shrubstep is a dominant ecosystem that stretches throughout all different areas of North America. The shrubstep houses many plants and animal species that are specific and unique to its habitat. With only 50% of the ecosystem remaining, it has become endangered and the effort is precious to keep the remaining land vigorous. Here in Yakima, we have some of the largest blocks of unaltered shrubstep land in the Pacific Northwest. The land's unique soil composition and physical features give it an identity for above and below ground. The, the plants and animals that live around and in the habitat depend on it for the, their survival. So I'm Kurt Walker, I'm a, a licensed geologist and hydrogeologist with the State Department of Ecology. I should state right up front the, uh, that the shrub step environment uh, across Washington is found across a variety of geologic terrains and environments, but in the end they are uh, they are present because of a lack of rain and uh, the right soil conditions. Uh, and those soil conditions and the lack of rain, those are directly attributed to the, the geology of Washington. Soil is very much an alive thing. Uh, while there are uh, erosional products that kind of start to, to make up soil, soil is pretty dead without that alive um, bacterial activity and the decay and the buildup of organic material within that soil and you can get a, a very wide variety of soils. Washington State, Eastern Washington and Central Washington um, are just a part of the Columbia River Basalt Province which extends into uh, Idaho as, as well as into uh, Northern Oregon and that, uh, that basalt province is, is uh, driven by flood basalts where they flooded out in a, in a sequence of large-scale lava flows that covered um, a great part of, uh, of Washington State um, over many millions of years. It's, it's pretty amazing, um, large-scale, pretty unique. There's only um, you know, so there's not that many uh, large-scale flood basalt provinces that, that are really comparable anywhere, and so it's, it's pretty special that we have uh, that feature here in Washington. Basalt is not the only thing you will find in the shrub step habitat. When looking at shrub step, we often find that it is flat with some rolling hills. The shrub step here is part of the Columbia Snake River Plateau. The, eleva the elevation for this plateau is at its lowest 500 feet and at its highest 5,000 feet. The shrub step environment creates very uh, dramatic um, temperatures. During the summer, it creates really warm temperatures and dry. And during the winter, uh, it can get below freezing and really cold. And it's always really windy, like right now it's pretty windy, but sometimes it's extremely windy. The temperature climate of the shrub set creates warm summers and cool winters. Unfortunately for common plants such as big sagebrush, summer temperatures can reach above 100 degrees. During months with this high heat and low rain, big sagebrush and other large plants of the shrub set have a deep penetrating root system that allows it to reach subsurface water. Smaller plants simply remain dormant until rainfall increases. Similarly to smaller plants, smaller animals almost become dormant during hot weather, choosing to stay underground until the sun sets and temperatures become cooler. Large animals such as mule deer and elk shed their heavy fur coats in order to help them stay cool. Winters are very different from the, from the summer months. There are below freezing temperatures along with blowing snow and strong winds that freeze plants over. Just like in summer, plants become dormant until it begins to warm up in the spring for large animals such as mule deer, elk, and coyotes. They develop a thicker coat of fur that helps to keep the warmth in during cold spells. Smaller animals like pocket mice and yellow-bellied marmots survive by bur burrowing underground, hibernating, and eating out of seeds they stored in preparation. The most pleasant se season of the shrub step are spring and fall. Temperatures are mild and plants begin to wake up from the dormant phases they enter in order to survive the winter and summer. These seasons are when plants complete the most growth. You can often see the hillsides dotted with blooming flowers such as lupine and shooting star wildflowers. Shrub step is simple, with various sage brushes making up over 70% of the relative cover, often widely spaced, these shrub traps soil from the air on windy days, creating islands in the landscape that provide a protection for grasses and they can get when trying to grow on their own. This allows grasses and shrubs to grow intermixed. You may think that in a shrub step environment, everything is dry, but you are completely wrong. So in the shrub step environment, there are different gra grasses, like tall grasses and short grasses that you might find in your yard. And here, because of all the humidity and because it rains a lot, you can see green grass. Vegetation tends to grow more heavily on north-facing slopes than south-facing ones. In this picture, you can see the north-facing slope on the left and the south-facing slope on the right. 
North-facing slopes are more shaded, with, which keeps the soil moist and encourages growth. South-facing slopes are more dry, and the blazing sun keeps a large amount of plants from growing. The shrub step environment is uh, made up of different classifications of sagebrush, from 13 to 42 different species. And here we have the big sagebrush, which is one of the most common um, plants you can find in the shrub step environment. Wow, this is a big sagebrush. You can tell it's a big sagebrush by the way that it is. Well, actually, there's much more to a big sagebrush than that. Usually growing several feet tall, this plant has gray green leaves with three lobes at the end of each one. It also has a strong smell and tastes terrible in order to ward off any animals that may try to eat it. Some common grasses include blue bunch wheatgrass, which can grow up to four feet tall and gets its wheatgrass name from having an appearance that's, that is similar to wheat. Green and brown aren't the only colors you'll find in the shrubs of environment. Different flowers are often found here including the ones in these pictures. They help to bring color to an otherwise dull landscape. The native plants of the shrub step are very important to the survival of the common wildlife found. Animals such as sage, sage grouse, mule deer, and elk are all uniquely adapted to consume sagebrush despite its disgusting taste. These animals then become prey for large predatory animals such as coyotes and bobcats. Due to the vast openness of the shrub step, it benefits animals to roam in herds of protections against these predators. Small animals such as pocket mice, ground squirrels, and yellow-bellied marmots have to find even more ways to protect themselves since their smaller sizes put them at a large, large disadvantage against predatory birds that may want to hunt them. With darker coats of fur on their backs, it allows them to blend into the, into the landscape easier. They also often create dens underground out of the sight of predators. There are many birds to be found in the shrub step ecoregion in addition to predatory birds such as golden eagles and red-tailed hawks. Western meadowlarks are beautiful birds that have black feathers on their back with a stripe of yellow around their neck. In addition to western meadowlarks, you can also find black couch chickadees like the one in this video. These birds have black heads with white cheeks, while their underbellies are also white. Unfortunately, the shrub step takes a long time to get back to its original state once it's disturbed by people. It is considered an endangered ecosystem with only about 15% of it left. One such reason for its reduction is the expansion of farming and housing developments as well as human activities. Plants are removed and wildlife scattered in search of more remote grazing areas. These human service, these disturbances also increase soil erosion and reduce animal habitats. Over 60% of the original shrub step habitats have been disturbed. When disturbance of the soil uh, by machines or humans occur, this encourages cheatgrass and other invasive species to grow. Cheatgrass is very flammable and can cause fires to happen easily. In the hot and dry summers, fires are common even without cheatgrass helping it along. When the fires happen so frequently that native plants are unable to grow back effectively, the shrub step ecosystem is greatly reduced. Fires can destroy and kill local wildlife as well. It can take years in order for these plants to regrow and for animals to return to, to graze in that area. Shrub step is an important ecosystem to the state of Washington that must be protected and cared for if we want to survive. Plants and animals here do not have much room for adaption and unfortunately will die if the services continue. The beautiful land provides a home to both humans and animals, sustaining multiple life forms. For those of us that live here in Washington, it can be easy for us to take the shrub step ecoregion for granted. However, as the ecoregion becomes more and more endangered every day, it's even more important for us to protect our beautiful land that we all call home.